What is up everybody, the History Guy here, and I've been toying with the idea of doing this series for a while now, and with the 50th anniversary of the first moon landing coming up in just over a week, and the second man to walk on the moon, a man who was a part of that mission, was Buzz Aldrin, I thought it'd be a great time uh, to play a little Buzz Aldrin's Space Program Manager. Basically what you do in this game is you take on the role of either a... Um, United States, the Soviet Union, or even a third kind of fictional space agency. And you just go through from the very beginning stages where you're developing rockets, you're developing your astronauts, all the way up through moon landings and beyond. So we're going to kind of do a series on this. The ser uh, game's several years old, but I thought this is a great time to do that as we come up on uh, the July anniversary, the 50th anniversary of Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landing on the moon. So, with that said, uh, I've got to decide, first of all, who I want to be. Uh, so, we've got the choices here. We've got a sandbox mode where there's not really any set uh, standards. And I think that's probably the way I'm going to go with this. Uh, you get a certain amount of funds and target prestige to achieve during the first budget review, which takes place after four years. Then you'll decide which programs to open. Uh, the other option is you can take on the role of the space program and lead the efforts to put a man on the moon. So I think since we're getting ready to celebrate that anniversary, that's what we'll do. But rather than taking on the USA or even a fictional GSA, we're going to see if we can use the, uh, the might of the Soviet empire and beat the United States to the moon. So we're going to choose the Soviet campaign. We're going to go on a normal difficulty. You, know, you get a little more funds that way. Uh, we're not going to do hard or buzz hard this time around. Uh, so we're going to dive in, and I'll kind of talk through how this game works uh, as we go along. All right, the Soviet Space Agency has been established. Welcome to the Soviet Space Agency. Welcome, comrade. My name is Sergei Korolev, and I'm the chief designer of the Soviet Space Program. The duties in your newly appointed role involve managing the space agency by opening programs, hiring employees, allocating resources, and planning and executing missions. Behind me lies the space complex, the place where all your management activities will take place. So we'll kind of talk through. Uh, every so often you get a budget review. And based on how much prestige you've earned, and we'll look at the uh, things you have to meet, the goals, that's how you earn money that you'll need for the next stage. And things get progressively more expensive as you move along until you get to the moon landings, which are insanely expensive compared to the early game. Uh, so our new budget per season during the next four years is 3000 Minimum and maximum target prestige are 187 and 1875 So I want to hit that 1875 in the next four years, which is going to bump me up to 10000 per season in the following uh, four years. So first thing we have to do is we have to kind of make sure that we're building everything up. We've got to start hiring our employees. So we'll go ahead and take a look at all that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to start building our astronaut cosmonaut center and our mission control center. It's going to take some time to build those. Uh, so we switch over to construction mode. It's going to cost us two seasons at uh, $500 uh, to build that. It's also for the Mission Control Center, uh, it's going to cost us 300 one season to build that. And then over here in the set center, this is where we uh, recruit our scientists, our engineers, our technicians, people that we're going to need. And actually, we need to switch back uh, out of construction mode and go back over to the regular. Ah, darn it. There we go. So now what we're going to do is we want to start hiring some folks to do these things and you can sort everything by their age their skill level uh, space probes human rated rockets uh, crude spacecraft eva suits these are all important things but right now uh, what i want to look for is i want to look for anything with the highest learning potential because if they've got a high learning potential uh, then they can actually grow pretty fast. Uh, I'd rather have somebody with a high, the highest learning potential than worry too much about these other things. Because all we're going to be doing early on is training these folks uh, in the skills that we need. Because you see there's not a huge level of difference from one to the next. So I'm really after learning potential right now. So I'm going to go with the two that are the highest. So we've got Nikita Vodovatov. We're going to hire him. Oh, we get to choose which skill. Oh, these are the people we already have, I guess. So we're actually going to hire two new ones. 
All right, let's take a look. Here we go. We've got one that's 96. Anthony uh, Baldacci. Doesn't sound very Russian. And here's one that's 96. Uh, Leonid Smenov. So those are the two we're going to hire. So every time you hire somebody, it costs money. So these are all things you have to kind of keep in mind as you're spending. So now with the ones that we have, what I want to do here is I want to actually start training these folks. And rockets and space probes are all I'm really concerned about right now. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look here. We've got th this person is the highest in space probes. So we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do a, um, I don't know. We'll do a single training course for now, I guess. Uh, so I'm thinking I'm going to do mostly rockets and then just the one on space probes. So everybody else, oh, I should have done space probes here. Yeah, let's uh, undo that. We'll do rockets with these folks. This one here, actually just sort these by skill on rockets and space probes. So that's my highest space probe. So that's what I want to do with that person there. Everybody else, I think we're going to do rockets. Well, that one's pretty good on space probes too. So I think I'll do that. Everybody else rockets. All right. I don't know if there's a whole lot else I need to do this turn. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next turn of the game. Yeah, I haven't started vehicle assembly building yet because I'm not worried about that just yet. No programs open yet. Nope. Because everything you do costs upkeep. So if I open a program before I'm ready to start working on that program, it's going to cost me money. If I'm building something I don't need yet, it's going to cost me money. And I need to save every bit of money that I have. So uh, now here's what's happened. NASA has opened the Explorer 1 program, which is their earliest uh, form of... Uh, Satellites, Project Mercury, of course, is their initial astronaut program. We've hired our new workers. Uh, looks like we got a 21% reduction of fixed costs for the next nine seasons, so that's nice. Uh, we've completed the Mission Control Center. So now we're going to hire some controllers for our Mission Controller. Uh, the General Secretary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union holds a speech at the Congress of the Party. And so he's kind of letting them know what we're going to be doing. The budget assigned during each season remains constant during the first four years. Then, of course, prestige. Uh, visit the public affairs office, which shows you the target goals. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the control center, because what we need to do now is start hiring our controller so we can train those. Uh, again, we're going to look for highest learning potential among these employees. And I think I'm going to hire five of them. All right, so David Blixel is the best of the bunch. We've got 87, 87. And here's a 94. All right, so there's four. Let's get one more. Tatiana Alexandrova. All right, so that's going to cost 212, which is a good bit of money. But you can see here I've got 20, almost 26,000 right now. And I'm gaining uh, almost 2,000 a turn. So... Um, I think that might be it for now. All right. Following scientists, engineers, and technicians have graduated from basic training. So I've got two new uh, set folks available. Uh, we've got our hires in the flight controllers, and we've completed the process of building the cosmonaut center. So it's time to hire some astronauts, cosmonauts, and start getting them trained as well. We're going to hire four again looking for the highest learning potential because we can train them much easier. So it looks like we've got two women so far. These are all really good choices. So these are our four initial astronauts, cosmonauts, that we're going to hire here. We'll go ahead and get them hired. And then let's take a look at what else we want to do here. Um, we're going to train some additional folks in space probes i think let's go ahead and take a look um we're still actually in the main middle of training with some of these folks but we've got two or two new ones uh, we're going to train both of them in space probes actually i think i might do one in rockets no they're already really good no he can catch up to speed on rockets there pretty quickly 
All right, with that said, we're gonna upgrade the set center. We're gonna to go to construction for that. It's gonna cost a thousand. We wanna get that to the next level and you'll see why as we move along. That'll allow me to hire new crew once that's complete, once we get into 1956. And I think that's about it for now. All right, flight controllers have graduated from basic training. Set personnel have graduated from their advanced training. Uh, we're now training our cosmonauts and we've started building the set center, upgrading the set center. We're gonna go ahead and start building our vehicle assembly building now because we're gonna need that before we can uh, build anything and actually get it launched. So I wanna go over to the set center now and take a look at our scientists that have graduated from training. Uh, we're at 67% on rockets with this one. I think I wanna go one more training course before we finish that up. I feel like we could do a little better. Same here, space probes. I wanna get those higher. The reason those percentages matter is because they improve how quickly you uh, research a mission and are able to get that mission off the ground. Uh, and the higher the percentage, the better the mission's going to do. You don't want your missions failing because that kills your prestige. All right, so now we've got our mission control center. Our personnel are ready to be trained. Uh, the first thing I want to look at is I want to see who the best overall is because that's going to be our, our overall mission director uh, for our first missions. And we're going to start training them starting with their weakest skill. So uh, I'm not entirely sure who that is. Um, and then what we're gonna do is each of the others is gonna focus on an individual skill. Uh, looks like it might be this person here. And uh, maybe this one. All right, Damien, you are going to be our mission director and we are gonna start with the lowest skill. And there you have that. Everybody else is gonna go by what their highest is. Uh, so in this case, we've got uh, spacecraft systems, Trajectory and GNC. I don't think we need um, to worry about mission operations yet. So what do we do? Spacecraft systems, trajectory, and GNC. We need to do crew and payloads. And then that leaves you with uh, propulsion, I guess. Okay. So everybody's trained there. We're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and also upgrade my mission control center. So we'll get that ready to go and we can hire some additional folks for that as well. Let's go ahead and end this season. Yeah, I know. All right. Vehicle assembly building has started construction. Uh, mission control center has obviously started as well. And this one, the set center has been upgraded. A uh, reduction of fixed costs. That's always nice. Anytime we can find something to reduce the budget a little bit. Uh, we've got one more season for the vehicle assembly building to be complete. I think we can go ahead and start hiring some more scientists here. So let's go ahead and get that going. Let's look and see who the best available minds are. Oh, Joe Miller. We got an American working for us, it looks like. Maybe Brit. Who knows? Um, 90, 88, 87. Let's go ahead and hire those four. So again, just got to keep an eye on that budget. And as soon as this vehicle assembly building is complete, we are going to go ahead and start our process of um, getting some programs going. But we're going to go ahead and uh, get our first program open right now. And we're going to select Earth because these are going to be Earth programs. And so first things first, Earth orbiting research satellite. Uh, that's going to be the Sputnik program. And we're going to go ahead and open that. It's going to cost 838 and 77 per season to open that. And then what we've got to do is we've got to start researching rockets and we can't do that until the vehicle assembly building is done. However, we can uh, work on researching the Sputnik itself. And we've got a little bit of uh, these two guys are pretty terrible on space probes because they're actually designed to be working on rockets so we've got one guy he's going to start uh, researching the sputnik probe and you can see the project's going to go up by 19 percent this quarter we've got a long way to go before we want to try and launch that mission but at least we're getting uh, close to start 
and uh, 1956 quarter one. Let me take a look and see what else I want to do here. I'm always going to try to keep as many um, personnel recruited and training as possible, even though it's going to cost some money. Uh, just because down the road, you need a ton of personnel on some of these missions. Uh, so we're going to always try to keep those maxed out as best we can. So I'm back in mission control now. And I'm going to hire just about as many as I possibly can. Let's go ahead and hire these five new candidates. That's going to cost a pretty penny. I think we're, no, we're maxed out on these. We've got a couple of folks who aren't training right now, but... They're going to be getting put on missions here pretty soon, so that's the reason for that. Um, we could probably hire a couple more cosmonauts too. We've got some really smart people out there. All right, let's go ahead and hire these three. And that's pretty well all I'm going to do here because we're going to have our vehicle assembly building done. Uh, after this turn and we can start researching rockets all right nothing happening in the u.s we already kind of knew about all these things so now there's our, our vehicle assembly building let's go ahead and go back into this and let's look at our rocket programs the s uh, the r7 uh, is the sputnik booster that's going to be pretty easy to uh, research Oh, here's the R7 SK72. That's the Luna booster. Uh, because here's the thing. I don't want to build something that I'm only going to use once. But I also don't want to kind of do overkill here. So, um, But there's not a huge difference between these two. So i got to think about this a little bit. I think I'm going to go with the Vostok. It's a human-rated rocket, so I'll be able to use that same rocket, which will already be researched. Uh, for my human missions, so um, it's going to cost a little more, but it's going to save me in the long run having to research additional rockets. Now, I don't have a lot as far as human rated rockets research goes, so I think we are going to go ahead and have to start leveling those folks up. This is not going to help me a whole lot. That was kind of a mistake on my part. I should have been doing research into human rated rockets um, man that is not worth it at all all right so we'll keep that open and it's going to cost money but we're going to go ahead and um, let's just get this one off the ground and then we'll start slowly researching the other one as well here we go so you can see how how quickly i'm going to boost up on those That'll make a big difference. So now we can select that rocket and pair it with that payload, and we can see exactly where things stand with that. Uh, if we launch this into space, we're going to get the following prestige for different things. That's going to get me most of the prestige that I need uh, for the next time, but we're going to need additional prestige in order to hit the max so we can max out that budget moving forward. Uh, now, if I schedule it right now, it's not going to do very well. So we're going to continue to do R&D, and we're going to add a second person to Space Probe. So that's going to get it up to 45% on the next turn. Now, I want to go back into some of these centers and see who's not currently training or working on anything. And it looks like everybody is at the moment. So let's go over to Cosmonauts, do the same thing, make sure everybody's training. They are. Mission control, same deal. Everybody's either training or uh, getting ready for training. So we're ready to move on to the next phase. All right, we've got our Sputnik up to 42% reliability. NASA's opened another program, the Pegasus Satellite. All right, now we've got a man out of training, and he's got 80% in rockets, so we're definitely going to add him to that research. Uh, I'm going to take a look and see if there's... Now, there's nobody else who's ready to go. I want to uh, go ahead and go back and look at my payload R&D. We've got more people that are ready to go into space probes. That's enough for now, I think, on those. That's going to get me up to 66%. So we're going to be actually ready to launch that satellite here in the next couple of turns. In the meantime, let's go ahead and work on training these folks in 
human rated rockets so we're ready to go on that when the time comes I'm spending money unnecessarily in that area right now I think we'll go ahead and start working on no, you know what? You're going to do space probes because you're pretty smart in that area. Uh, we've also got cosmonauts that we can train. And we're going to kind of go, let's see, leadership on this guy here. We're going to get people, uh, uh, again, um, some people like the mission commander, you want to be good in one area. Others, you just really want them kind of good in everything. I'm going to actually get these folks up in their fitness as well. All right, I think we're good on all of that. I don't think there's any more upgrades we need to do to any of this stuff right now. So we're going to go ahead and end this season. Oh, we got a bunch of people available to train in mission control. Let's go ahead and sort everybody by skill. I can't remember who my person was for mission control but I think we're gonna make it Tomislav Rogov because he seems to be kind of the one that's got the best averages and different things so Tomislav we gotta try to remember that let's go ahead and level him up in his weakest area everybody else we're gonna work on their strongest areas so propulsion here Trajectory and GNC. Then we've got spacecraft systems. So we'll have kind of experts in each of these areas. Mission operations. Oh, that's where we wanted to... Uh, kind of sort by the best for flight director and we've already got him so we're good to go there uh, we do have some additional folks we can train and we're just gonna actually train them based on what they're already highest in. we're gonna just get some additional expertise in those areas sweet all right one more to go and I think we are good mission ops all right, so we're spending down that money pretty fast now. So we just got to be a little careful of that. Sputnik's up to 68%. How about the rockets? They're up to 56%. Now, we're the Soviets, so we're not necessarily all that concerned about safety and things of that nature. No, I shouldn't say that, but um, we are very, very close, I think, to launching that. We're going to probably go one more turn, and then that, we're going to make that happen. I may be ready to go ahead and start... Uh, opening additional things after this next turn. I'm losing a lot of money right now, so I don't want to go too crazy. But I think we're going to go ahead and end this episode with launching our Sputnik mission. I feel like I want to go one more turn before I do that because I'm just not real crazy about the percentages right now in my rocket program. No, I don't want to open a new one. I want to manage the existing ones. So we don't have anybody available right now because everybody's doing other things but let's take a look at this you're not very good with rockets now you're at eight. oh yeah that's 81 i thought it said 51 all right next turn we're going to get up to 77 percent, and that might be enough for me to be comfortable with going ahead and opening that and right now mostly everybody's training uh so let's we've got a few cosmonauts available for training right now and we're going to work on their fitness all of them, I think. Got to be in good shape if you want to go into space, folks. And I'm going to go ahead and hire a couple of more. Oh, we're maxed out. Okay. Maybe we'll hold off on that. All right, we're going to move ahead. And next turn, we're going to go for Sputnik in the first quarter of 1957. Uh, reliability on the component is 85%. The rocket is 77%. I'm pretty comfortable with that. And it looks like we'll probably get ours into space before the Americans do. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go ahead and schedule the Sputnik mission. There's one component that's still below 80%. Yes, do it. 
All right, now we're going to select our uh, person in charge of booster. It's going to be Damien. Uh, actually, let's choose Tomislav as our flight director. And then spacecraft systems right there. All right, I guess we can auto assign best candidates. Same thing. All right, 2000 to schedule that mission. Now, here's the thing this is far from a sure thing. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous about whether or not we're going to pull this off. But in the meantime, uh, we've got to go ahead and continue training some of our other personnel. And again, we're just going to kind of train in their best areas so that those are kind of our experts in those things. And make sure we have a little bit of everything going for us. Oh, they're really good in trajectory and GNC there. Crew and payload. Another crew and payload. Okay. And we've got a couple of cosmonauts we can go ahead and train. And again, we're working on fitness with everybody right now. Get everybody up to speed on that before we worry about other things. Because we've got a while before we use those. All right, here we go. Oh, set center. Let's go ahead and research or, or get these guys leveled up to human rated rockets. Actually, you know what? Time to start assigning folks to actually doing the research on those human rated rockets. So uh, manage rocket programs. Here we go. The rest of these folks aren't great yet. I think we're going to give them one more training before we do that. All right. So let's get them leveled up a little more in human rated rockets before we assign them to actually doing research. You're going to be on space probes. All right. And that's it. Let's go ahead and watch this mission unfold. I'm not entirely convinced it's going to be a success. We've got an 85% reliability on components. We earned 1400 prestige, which is almost all of the prestige I need. I need, I think, 1875 uh, to earn the money for next one, uh, for the next maxing out. Uh, yeah, we're going to monitor that from mission control. That's half the fun, right? All right. Let's see if we can get our first satellite in space. This is one of my favorite parts of this game is kind of sitting here. All right. A problem occurred if we sit. Oh, my gosh. Um, we can spend a lot of money to, you know what? It's probably worth it just because of how much prestige I'm going to gain. Ugh, that was a lot of money. All right. We're good. We're good. So far, so good. There's going to be problems during these things. Hopefully, we don't have any more. Love the like Soviet music going on. Oh, jeez. Want me to spend more money? Don't fail. Don't fail. Don't fail. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, you're killing me. Ugh, oh, this is brutal. No, it failed. Okay, well, we're going to cover that up. We're not going to talk about it. We were in the fourth stage out of six on that, too. Oh, my gosh. I don't think I've ever had my first mission fail before. Of course it did, because this is for a video, and so that's how it would have to happen. All right. So we lost some prestige, but that's not a huge deal. Launcher disintegrates 104 seconds after launch due to longitudinal resonance of the strap-on boosters. All right. So hopefully we still learned some things from that. But we're not going to talk about that. The world doesn't need to know that happened. All right. So that really killed me financially. I am in trouble as far as finances are concerned after that. Um, all right. We're going to end the season. We're going to get our research up. And we're going to try this again. All right, here we go again. All right. 
we desperately need this to work this time because it costs a lot of money for these missions and I cannot spend a dime on any fixes that might arise this time around. So we've got to hope this just goes off without a hitch because I'm going to be seriously hurting if it doesn't. All right, so far so good. We already made it past uh, past uh, four where we messed up last time. Hey, I think we have success. That was an expensive satellite to launch into space. <laughs> All right, there's the 1,400 prestige points that we desperately needed to earn. Unfortunately, we had the setback first, and now I'm going to be financially strapped uh, for the next couple of years. But the good news is we learned a lot. We got some prestige. We beat the Americans with a satellite into space, and that is where I'm going to wrap this up. We are at the end of 1957. Let me know your thoughts. If you would, please hit that like button. Uh, that'll help to let me know that you uh, enjoyed this and you want to see more from this series. And uh, for all of you who are out there and you are space enthusiasts, I love to hear your input. I don't know nearly as much as I'd like to about the space race. Uh, I know a little bit here and there. Uh, I've studied it. My son's really, really into this sort of thing, and he could tell you all kinds of useless facts about it all. Uh, but thanks for watching. Please leave a comment. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you again with Episode 2 in a couple of days. Thanks for watching.